to get cracking. So, Tim, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am going to be hosting sort of a series of Talk Money Week mini podcasts where I'm talking all things money to people around the business. So we're obviously joined by Tim. So Tim is one of our co-founders at Nudge. And today, him and I are going to be discussing, you know, the relationships we have with our parents about money and then also how that begins to shape the future of our finances and our retirement habits as well. So I guess first question to kick us off then, Tim, is how are you actually feeling about your retirement? Have you got, you know, an end of work plan? And then have you got any tips for people who haven't got that in plan? Um, yeah, so I'm feeling all right, to be honest. I think um, I think there's a couple of elements to it. One is, are you going to have enough in retirement? But then linked to that, it's, are you organized enough that you kind of know where everything is? Now, I consider myself quite fortunate because um, at the beginning of my career, I spent a lot of time supporting other people with pensions. And so I guess I was tuned in to making sure I was on top of stuff myself. Um, so I had lots of nice, and I guess also because I've only really had three jobs, including Nudge, I haven't got lots of pensions that are kind of difficult to keep track of. So I've got a nice simple filing system and I've got, uh, you know, all my, um, yeah, all my, I've made sure I've registered with all the online pension tools. And I'll tell you a little trick that I've done actually, a little tip. Um, so I have a folder on my iPhone screen, which I haven't got, otherwise I'd show you. Um, and I've got all my, my three kind of pension um, icons in there. But I've actually called the folder holiday. Because what for me, retirement is just going to be one big holiday. Definitely. So, um, yeah, so I've got this folder called holiday. In there, I've got my, my pension app so I can log in and kind of check and my statements and all that type of stuff. Um, so that would be my tip. Um, and I think secondly, yeah, it's really worth just contributing as much as you can when you're younger. Uh, being an old bloke now, so I'm 43, um, you know, I'm very grateful that in my 20s, I put at least 10% of my salary into pension. And that meant I wasn't necessarily making savings in other places, but it just means I've done the hard work now. And it means that now when I, when I came to then set up Nudge eight years ago, where I wasn't making any money and I knew I would, certainly wouldn't be able to save my pension, I knew I'd kind of done a lot of the hard work already. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty organised. I think that's my biggest thing that I've only just started thinking about how important this is and that I should be putting a big chunk of money away for it. And what were your parents like then when it came to talking about retirement? Was pension something they discussed with you or was it a little bit of a grey area or taboo subject? Um, so, yeah, no, I never talked to my parents about it. Um, I guess, you know, as I started my career, though, and became more aware of pensions and in my kind of mid-20s, I started to, and also increasingly need to kind of look out for them as well. So I have, you know, responsibility up to them. Um, you know, I started to show a bit more of an interest and make sure that, you know, they weren't being scammed. And, you know, you hear all these horror stories, don't you, about pensioners giving away their life savings. Um, so my mum... My mum worked for the NHS for 45 years. Um, so, you know, her retirement was, you know, pretty simple. And the fact that she had one employer um, and as a result of that, she had a very generous pension scheme. Um, my dad's career was a bit more bitty. So um, you know, he's an engineer by background. So not necessarily, um, you know, uh, thinking about finance as as other people might and I, uh, I think that combined with the fact that he had quite a few different jobs um, he was made redundant a couple of times you know I think his pension was a bit less organized than my mum's um, but between the two of them you know they you know, they don't live a particularly lavish life but you know they certainly um, have enough to make the most of, of their retirement or their their holiday <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing it's figuring out what kind of life you want your retirement to look like like we sound like the same when as soon as I retire that's me gone I will be on one big holiday but for other people it's just about slowing down and spending time with grandkids so yeah figure out what you want I think is a big tip for people yeah so with this sort of the theme of talking to parents or even, you know, talking to, you know, grandparents, especially in my case of have you spoken to them about will writing or was that something they volunteered to you or 
did you have to encourage your parents to have those conversations with you? Um, no, so we're a very open family, um, incredibly open. So, yeah, my mum has kind of yeah, been in particular, I guess as my dad's got older and his health has started to falter a bit, she has had to take over all of that side of things. You know, when I was a kid, it was very traditional. My dad looked after the finances side of things, but you know, he's not so capable of doing that anymore. So my mum's had to take it on and she's really led kind of open, transparent conversations um, around her will, but also around uh, power of attorney as well. So, you know, if my folks have an accident or illness, you know, dementia, anything like that, you know, I can make the decisions on their behalf. So, you know, we've been pretty organised in that respect. And it's, it's, it's amazing because I've got mates or yeah, extended family don't have that openness you know people don't like talking about it but uh, I've seen enough horror stories over the years that you know it's worth a bit of uncomfort up front to save a lot of pain and hassle and worry in the long run. Yeah I think there's never a right time to have these conversations the sooner the better definitely because they do cause even more difficulty and it's normally at even more sensitive times so if we can get these things in place and that is what you know these mini series podcasts are all about it's all about having those conversations with our friends our family but obviously in this case you know our parents so have you got any life lessons that your parents kind of shared with you or were there any money habits that you picked up I mean i picked up some bad money habits from my mum and dad I'm not gonna lie you know my access to financial education was not great my dad never spoke about it so it's always seen as a bit of a rude subject to kind of broach and my mum was the other way she just spent everything so I kind of had this in between but everyone's different so did your parents give you good money habits bad money habits um, yeah, good money habits. So, you know, when, when I was growing up, there wasn't a lot of money, um, you know, it's enough to keep us warm and fed, but, you know, things like holidays weren't, weren't a given. Um, you know, my mum worked night shifts as a district nurse. So, you know, I was very aware from an early age, that kind of work ethic. And, um, you know, my, my parents were, you know, very prudent, um, and that's paid off. Um, so I think when they first retired, they were nervous about were, were they going to have enough money. Um, uh, but they got into a rhythm after a couple of years and realised that actually they did. And, and now they're able to kind of in, enjoy uh, that very much, that kind of focus on saving that they had throughout their career. Um, and I think that's rubbed off on me. So, you know, as evidenced by my pension, I'm, I, 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 you know, my default is to save. Um, I, I've described myself as a... Um, uh, right, so I like spending money, but I'm almost like a, a bit of a reluctant spender. Yeah. You know, I need to make sure that first and foremost, I've got the kind of the savings bank. So, yeah, I've definitely, definitely got that for my parents. I used to be the opposite. So obviously, like my second name is Spend Love. And I always used to joke like, oh, I'm a family of spenders. But as I got older, I was kind of like, I don't actually need to be that way. It's not a good way to be. And it definitely made me learn my life lessons the hard way, but that have had a positive impact. Um, you, um, and, have you ever looked back up your family tree and see where that spend love comes from and whether <laughs> there was a frivolous person years ago? <laughs> Sadly yeah. not. So we've always been farmers, like right back for hundreds and hundreds of years. We are farmers or coal miners. Mm. So no, we weren't anybody with, you know, any kind of good spending habits. So we oh, worked dear. hard, but we probably spent a lot as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what about those what if scenarios then? So those those things of, you know, like you were saying earlier, what if there's an illness? What if there's an accident? How important is it to talk to our parents about those, you know, kinds of conversations? Yeah, I think it's really important. And um, I think this has become particularly accentuated me having set up Nudge, mm-hmm. you know, having gone from a very secure job with my pension and and the rest of it to chuck all of that away to <clears throat> set up nudge and, and go for a period without earning. Um, I definitely had to kind of run through the what if scenario. So you know, if this doesn't work, you know, what what are we gonna do? Um, and so yeah, I like I like to make sure that I've got that kind of plan B and plan C. And uh, you know, again, I think you know that that's come from my my parents. Um, yeah, I think it's just about being proactive. I mean, we, we talk a lot about 
you know, with, with potential clients about what financial well-being is. You know, it isn't a discrete thing. You know, financial well-being is about how you feel about money, that relationship you have. And for a lot of people, that just being proactive is about being in control. And I think that, you know, thinking about those what ifs, those worst case scenarios, having a plan A, B, C, you know, that it doesn't matter if you haven't got, you know, all the money in the world. If you've got that plan, you've got that confidence. And that, for me, is the basis of financial well-being. I completely agree. I think real wealth is just that. It's financial freedom, isn't it? It's having that control. It's knowing yeah. what's going to happen should you know those what if scenarios play out but uh, I think you shared some great top tips and tricks I think the biggest thing people will take away from this is have those conversations yes they will be uncomfortable but they're going to pay off and pay for themselves in the long run so thank you Tim for joining us hope everyone has a lovely day and enjoy their Talkman week. Mm -hmm.